All right, we're working on pretzel logic. I think the beginning of this still sounds better, especially with, uh, you've got to have one guitar, you know, more or less covering, uh, or when you play this, you know, part, you know, as far as two guitar parts, one part has got to cover where the keyboard, you know, is covering that hole. <laughs> first taking a look at this song you know we've got that D triad or we were using the last week when we had gone over or Thursday we're using a B minor to a C they both work we'll talk about why you know the next time we get together at our next lesson but what I want to do is have one guitar should still be playing that covering the keyboard part. Okay, the second guitar could either play said we could add that as an embellishment you know we were talking about that before using E minor 7 or C major 7 or C second guitar can just play the dyads or B minor to a C triad. The reason why these little triads work is if you take a look at these chords they've got either nines in them if you see like a D over A or A minor 7. I mean if you add a ninth to some of these chords you know, or you're adding notes as it would be in the keyboard part, you know, this all works together. And we'll talk about why again, why these little triads, it's kind of polytonal harmony and theory, which is what we talked about. But what I want to do is, at least at first, put this together so it's two specific guitar parts. Now again, the one guitar could be playing just the... coming up onto that, it says D over E, that or it's really when we start to look at this, I'm going to give you different versions of these chords, but at first we're going to just do the remember it's that D chord shape with the E the E with an F sharp going to play, which covers the whole thing into that. Two. 
that's as far as we got with this and then we'll go through the rest of it as we go along and finish this out but I'm gonna put first play one guitar part then the other in other words two guitar parts you know let's try to separate both of them so you can hear both of them you know and specifically what parts are gonna be there so it's <laughs> up to the G I was on you know we haven't added that in yet but I'm gonna just when you go up to a G use that F chord shape and I'm adding my bass notes with my thumb just for now that's the G and I'm just using again the F chord shape for the G coming out of that chorus Take it from there, and again, we'll add to these chords. I'll show you different ways to um, invert or just different inversions of chords uh, that will work with the uh, chorus. But for right now, I still, that's, you know, just just keep that D chord shape with the E, right, for the D over E. E, I'm putting the F sharp in here until, you know, we can get an A in the bass for that chord depends on how we're going to play it. There's also a different inversion of this that I want to work on. But at any rate, that'll give us a start and uh, hope this helps and I'll try to put another one together, a uh, video so we can, uh, you know, or at least there are lessons so we've got something to work with, you know, um, or to finish out, you know, what we're doing with this song. Okay. All right.